Okay, hi, I'm, I'm Dr. Thomas Wright, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking uh, on, on kind of a related uh, uh, topic or the same kind of talk on uh, the sa safety with liposuction as well. And I also, um, you know, want to definitely thank all the uh, people that, all the hard work that went to putting this, uh, this amazing conference together and, and want to thank, uh, you know, the organizers and, and all, the, all, all the people that help make this happen. So, okay, I, I have no financial disclosures, and um, so my the 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 thoughts began uh, for this talk when um, in last fall when uh, Dr. Adam Alley uh, published a, a case um, called "Fat Attacks in the British Medical Journal," and it's about uh, fat embolism occurred. Uh, after a liposuction, um, in the patient, uh, it was a patient who had lipedema who was having liposuction of her uh, knees and lower legs. So fat embolism um, is when, under some traumatic event, not rarely with liposuction, more commonly seen after like a car accident or such, uh, the fat uh, goes into the veins and and. Uh, <clears throat> embolizes to the lungs, and uh, this is a, uh, <clears throat> a serious and, and potentially life-threatening um, uh, kind of um, event. Um, and uh, so afterwards, I, I began corresponding with Dr. Ali to find out more, and there were um, <clears throat> risk factors involved in uh, in this patient uh, and, and, and around the surgery that I think could have been mitigated. And who knows, maybe uh, uh, this could have been prevented. So, um, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review the medical literature on, um, that, that speaks to um, risks, for, uh, risk for liposuction and risk for uh, um, patients with lipedema uh, specifically in liposuction and how we can um, reduce them preoperatively during the procedure and postoperatively. So the risks for liposuction with, you know, for any patient having liposuction, but lipedema patients generally have higher risks because of comorbidities they have. Um, and so talk a little bit about that, uh, the risk factors that increase complications with liposuction. So lipedema patients are generally heavier than most patients having liposuction. And increased weight or high BMI is, in, in, uh, is a risk factor for any surgery, and including liposuction. And lipedema patients also have larger than average subcutaneous fat. And the the risk of, um, of complications from liposuction increases significantly, about a threefold increase once you remove above five liters of fat in a single procedure. Uh, use of general anesthesia increases the risk of, uh, of complications with all surgeries, including liposuction. Uh, general anesthesia itself can cause uh, life-threatening complications, and uh, general anesthesia can uh, especially repeated uh, general anesthesia can increase the risk of postoperative cognitive dysfunction. Now, um, and that's really seen most in the uh, on the uh, very young and very old. Um, presence of varicose veins uh, increase the risk of bleeding, increase the risk of DVT and embolism, and um, so lipedema patients have increased risk for varicose veins and venous insufficiency. The larger uh, the diameter of the suction cannula, the more traumatic. So I just want to like spend a second here explaining. Um, so here um, are these are two mess. These are the cannulas we use to um, introduce the tumescent. And, and this is a uh, a wall tumescent cannula, and this is a uh, the sort of standard Klein tumescent. They both um, administer the tumescent under pressure. The wall is under higher uh, higher pressure um, 
But the tumescent cannulas are not, um, themselves, are, do not cause trauma. Um, the trauma occurs with the suction. So, um, and, and the, So how much did you guys miss? Okay, okay, all right. So uh, again, the, um, it's the suction cannulas are the ones that's, that the studies have shown are associated with uh, trauma. So on the left is a, um, this is a uh, PAL uh, Mercedes cannula. It's a small three millimeter cannula and it is the least traumatic and then then these are two wall cannulas, and they're uh, uh, slightly larger in diameter, and then they have different openings. And the more aggressive openings, like uh, kind of look like more more like a cheese grater, are more traumatic. And then this is uh, 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 and then on the far right is the uh, like this is an, a Blugerman cannula, and it's it does kind it really does look like a cheese grater, and it's a larger diameter cannula. And so, this is really what um, the these suction cannulas are what are uh, the business end, so to speak, of the liposuction. So. Mitigating uh, the or reducing the risk of complications before liposuction is performed, complete decongestion of the tissue should be done. You know that's the whole uh, manual lymph drainage, the compression wraps, or, and uh, pumps, possibly necessary. It it's not only important um, be, to reduce swelling and, and improve symptoms. It also reduces inflammation, tenderness, and heaviness. And it, I think it's important to do uh, before the surgery so that they, people can realize the benefits of the uh, compression. And it also helps with uh, that they, in an immediate post-operative procedure, post the procedure, that they're not trying to also learn a, uh, how, how to manage the fluid. And inevitably, the fluid gets worse. Uh, uh, f at least for a short term after the uh, liposuction. So patients with var varicose veins and, and uh, venous reflux should be treated. Certainly significant varicose veins and reflux. Not every patient with a, you know, a varicose vein or, or a, a whiff of venous reflux on an ultrasound needs to be treated. But large varicose veins um, increase the risk of bleeding from, uh, increase the risk of DVT and embolism. Um, now, uh, smaller networks, which of, of spider veins, uh, what we call, are, um, that's somewhat controversial. I, I, I do see increased spider veins in uh, lipedema patients. And, and some of them, um, if there's a very, rich network of them and they're uh, I feel like it's important to treat them because uh, of if if they're not they're I, I've afraid of excess bleeding so and, and as we already mentioned um, lipedema patients are more prone to those so I I firmly believe and I know this is uh, uh, that reliance on generous tumenous an anesthesia is important. Um, it helps uh, protect uh, the lymphatic structures, and and uh, if you rely on good um, tumescent for uh, pa pain control, you know that you're uh, you're going to get immediate feedback, um, it, it, and uh, you're going to know you're going to have uh, co comprehensive. Now, some people. Um, some surgeons do use general anesthesia for liposuction, and 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 I think that's um, there is some increased risk with general anesthesia, as Dr. Amron stated. He he quoted uh, like uh, uh, seven in, in ten thousand. Um, probably with modern techniques, it's probably as 
low as three in 10,000, but, but there's definitely good, uh, good studies that this does add the risk. So limits the amount of fat. Um, um, so once there's, there's, a, there's a fair number of studies on once uh, five liters of fat is removed in one surgery, the risk of complications goes up by about three times. And in and, and some states like Florida and California, they, they recommend uh, that you stay overnight if you're gonna go over those limits. Now with a lipedema patient, you know, who are very, uh, there's another way of looking at things and that's by total body surface area. And, um, and so if you use the guidelines for five to 8%, you could probably remove that would probably, uh, on, on someone who's very large, maybe that might, you might inch up to six or seven liters of fat. Um, but, but again, um, there is limits to how much fat can be safely removed in, 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 in one, one surgery. Again, uh, this is back to the cannulas. And so again, the, the delivery of the tumescence is, uh, does not, does not cause trauma or prevent trauma. It's really, it, it really is just uh, the size. Now size go, goes two ways. You can remove fat faster with larger cannulas, but they are, have an increased risk of, of, of trauma and uh, smaller cannulas, it, they uh, are less likely to cause trauma and, uh, but uh, take longer to remove. Um, and, um, and there's the studies on that. Um, and then finally, um, you know, knowledge of the lymphatic location. So, I mean, I, I th the, the most important structures in liposuction, subcutaneous liposuction, are, are the uh, lymph collecting ducts. And, um, okay. And so here, if you can see, the, they run along the, uh, the fascia just above the muscles and in the uh, uh, a pseudofascia around the saphenous and, and vein, et cetera. And they, um, if you injure those, you, you know, you're more likely to get a seroma or li likely to have um, ac increased swelling uh, postoperatively. Um, and so, it, you know, care, care must be taken to uh, not, um, not be, to not direct the, the cannulas uh, um, against those, those structures. So uh, that's the um, that's my talk. Uh, medical literature does give us gu useful guidance on how to reduce complications uh, from liposuction on lipedema uh, patients. And um, and uh, while liposuction is generally safe, uh, uh, great care should be taken to to uh, reduce any risk of out outcomes when possible. And these are the studies I. Um, um, uh, reference in, in during my talk. And this is our contact information. Um, and we also uh, um, have a booth out front. And thank you very much.